shut up compressor. Hey everyone, Matt here with Duke's Models, and welcome to the final installment of the P40F build. Now, if you're wondering what's with the getup, it's about 20 degrees outside, and the garage is more or less outside, so I'm pretty much chasing warmth however I can. Now, I actually wrapped up the P40 in the last installment, so this is more of a retrospective, kind of looking back at the build and my thoughts on the kit and all that sort of thing. But before we get into that, here are some final picks of the Trumpeter 132nd scale P40F. Okay, let's get on with the retrospective. So for this, I'm thinking, first, my thoughts on the kit, second, kind of a review of my intentions going into the build, and three, what I'm taking away from the build, with a few other things thrown in there. So in terms of the kit itself, this isn't one that I would call one of Trumpeter's good kits, but it's also not one I would call one of their bad kits. It's very much on the bubble. It has some very good elements to it. It goes together exceptionally well, it's nice and simple and simply engineered. It's got a few nice touches. The, uh, the photo etch walls of the flat bays actually helping to locate the wings to the fuselage. Excellent. The dugout divots for the navigation lights on the wingtips and on the tail. And the thicker clear parts that let you just kind of like shove those in there. So much nicer than dealing with like little sliver sized clear parts and trying to finagle them into like some weird little shallow shelf on the wing or any of that kind of bullshit. Very nicely done. The landing gear mounts fit well. The fishtail exhausts are individual pieces that you can put in after everything else is done. Also nice. Now, if you want the round exhaust, uh, you're going to be suffering because they are separated into halves and you have to put them in before you close the fuselage. Not ideal in any way, shape, or form. So... If you build this one, try to find one with fishtail exhaust, which a lot of P40Fs had. Um, let's see, what else did it do well? The surface detail is nice. Uh, it didn't have too many things just opened up for no reason. The one exception is the gun doors, which are separate pieces, even though there's like a little trough in there, but there's no gun bay detail of any kind. So it's one of those like, why didn't they just mold that as part of the wing and call it a day? especially because the fit of that is probably the rockiest fit of the entire kit. I don't know. Uh, so, that's pretty much the good stuff. It's a nice, simple kit. Builds fast. Builds well. Uh, if you are not too obsessed about accuracy, you'll probably have a lot of fun with it. There's also a lot that it doesn't do well. Uh, I mentioned accuracy, and whew, yeah, it misses some there. Even for somebody like me who's casually interested in the P40, uh, the entire fuselage just looks way too wide. Uh, the cockpit looks super wide. I think they fixed the depth issue with from the P40BC that they've done. But the width just seems to throw everything off and kind of start the snowball effect where everything else looks weird. Like the kit seat looks really oddly proportioned. The instrument panel seems crazy wide. The position of the seat and the rudder pedal, it's like, it's, it's just, it's a weird shaped thing. And I think that stems from 
one or two measurements probably being off and just kind of throwing everything else off as the engineers at Trumpeter tried to get it all to fit. That's my theory, and I'm sticking to it. It's also got a couple of other things, like the the top of the cowl on a P40F is supposed to be pretty flat, uh, kind of extending from the windscreen until it gets towards the nose, then it sort of curves down to meet the prop spinner a little bit. There is a random sort of like bulge in this kit. Annoying, yeah, not a huge deal to fix though because there's not a lot of surface detail up there to worry about blasting away. It's basically like a straight panel. And so you can just get in there and sand that down and not have to really worry about it, not have to worry about destroying any detail. So in terms of fixes, it's a pretty easy one. Beyond that, um, let's see, what else? So other accuracy things that are problematic, the prop blades are just way off. I actually stole prop blades from a Hasegawa P40E to use instead, and they're not great either. They seem to more closely resemble the narrow cord props that are reused on earlier P40s and kind of like phased out during the E and F era. So when you get into like the L, M, and Ns, they're using a wider cord prop that to my knowledge, no kit manufacturer actually makes. Uh, it's possible to source, I think, gray matter or whatever gray matter has become these days actually has resin ones. I managed to secure a set. So when I build another P40 in the future, I don't have to worry about all this bullshit. But yeah, the kit props suck ass. They're terrible. I mean, if you can find any way around using them, do it, because they look like toothpicks. Speaking of kit parts that are problematic, uh, the fuel tank braces, if you watched the last installment, fuel tank braces don't fit the drop tank. Um, They're, I think, intended for the shitty bomb that comes in the kit. So if you use the bomb, great, good for you. If you use anything else, you might run into trouble. If you want to put nothing down there, there are photos of those things hanging just kind of loose from the bottom of the aircraft. Uh, you'd probably need to modify the kit parts a bit to get to that, but I think that would probably be the best option. I stole my braces from the Hasegawa P40E again. I designed my own for 3D printing, but I'm not at the level of 3D printing yet where I can pull off something that small and not have it be destroyed in either the printing process or the, the support removal process. So I cut my losses there. I'd already kind of cannibalized that P40E anyway. So there we go. I also stole the aerial mast from the P40E because Trumpeter doesn't give you one. And I realize it's something that uh, you would think they would throw in, but they don't. <laughs> and pretty much every reference photo I've got of a P40F has an aerial mast. So again, it really helps to have a donor kit to supply you with things if you are super interested in a Merlin P40, which I was. Uh, the P40F has been one of those kits that I've wondered why they don't exist for a long time. Uh, it was flown by all kinds of interesting air forces and units. And, you know, it was a huge player in North Africa and Sicily. It was flown by the U.S. Army Air Force early on. It was flown by the French. Really interesting background story to it, and Trumpeter's P40F is the first one in like a decent scale that's a decent kit. I know that, I think it was like AM Tech or somebody made one in 148th, but it was, you know, one of those kits that you really have to suffer for. Uh, so happy to see that. And honestly, it's one of like, I don't know, two or three like that that I wish existed, like the Spitfire Mark 5C, for example. Everybody makes a 5B. There are 5Bs everywhere. Uh, Hobby Boss even made 5B. Tamiya made a 5B. Airfix made a 5 You know, they're all over the place. The 5C is the interesting one. The 5C is the one that flew with the Army Air Force in pretty significant numbers and had some really interesting schemes. And it's like, give, give us that. Anyway, we're talking about the P40 and the P40F. So 5C can wait for another time. I'm sure Edward will get around to one eventually as they're making every fucking Spitfire ever made. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. So yeah, basically, shut up, compressor. So that's the new 
quiet compressor. It's not. <laughs> I'm going to have to look at relocating that thing somewhere way far away from the bench in the garage if I want to be able to shoot while I'm using it. Good thing is it only cycles every now and then, so it's not that big of a deal. So anyway, those are the accuracy issues. Engineering-wise, again, as I said, for the most part, the kit is simple and clean and goes together well. It's got a couple of big whoppers. Uh, for me, the biggest one is the side windows and the windscreen, so basically the main clear parts. Uh, the windscreen is basically a frameless attachment onto plastic. So you don't have any canopy frame to really work with on the bottom there. Or if you do, it's like sliver thin. And... <sighs> fuck. I, I hate working with just like direct transparency part to plastic fit. It's super annoying. There are many ways around it. Many manufacturers have found great ways to just not even have that be a thing anymore. I mean, you know, look at what Tamiya's has done with like... The Mustang and their Spitfire and their Corsair and the F-14 and the upcoming F-4 where the clear part extends out into the fuselage itself. You don't ever come close to touching the transparencies as you glue it in. That's something that a lot of manufacturers are doing nowadays and I don't know why they're not doing it here. Um, fuck, it would have been so easy. But nope, that's not what we get. So, alas, you're basically stuck gluing the actual clear part of the clear part to plastic. The same holds true for the side windows uh, aft of the pilot. Basically those things that you could you know, look behind and the fuselage is kind of scalloped out so that there's a bit of a view back there. Those are also, the entire thing, frameless. And a frameless connection to the plastic. And this is one where I think Hasegawa obviously wins the engineering battle. Uh, if you're familiar with their P40s that have the, uh, you know, the scallop windows behind them, what they do is they have a part inside that joins together and you glue that into, you know, like behind the cockpit area. And then it's got clear parts that sandwich together sort of like around it. And those clear parts have the transparent window piece as part of them. And so it's a much easier thing to deal with in those kits than it is in this one. And that was kind of dicey gluing the, uh, you know, gluing those windows in because you've got to get it pretty much right if you don't want to smear glue everywhere. And just because of the nature of the construction of them, you can't really get in there and use to me extra thin. You've got to give it up and use some sort of PVA type of glue. So another small bit of annoyance. Uh, but overall, you know, I think all of those frustrations are kind of balanced by the simplicity and just the overall go-togetherness of the larger kit itself. So again, right on that bubble. Whether or not you want to build it basically depends, in my opinion, on how excited you are for the P40F and a Merlin engine P40 existing in the wild, and how much you can overlook accuracy issues. So, on to my intentions for the kit. So, I originally started this P40 several years ago and quickly put it back in the box and decided to wait for aftermarket stuff to kind of start showing up. Uh, you know, it was like the instrument panel was wonky, the cockpit detail was eh, the seat was terrible. Things like that. So, set it aside, and after the intruder was done, I was looking for some sort of quick, kind of palette cleansing build. And I remember this thing being like a quick slap together type design. Some stuff had come out. Uh, Edward made one of their look or Luke or however the fuck you pronounce it instrument panels. So that was something. Uh, there was a photo etch set that had like a photo etch seat in it. Also something. So. Basically, I started gathering the aftermarket and started working on the kit again, and my intention was just to throw it together quickly and have something fun as like a painting challenge. Basically, I wanted to get in there and play with the tropical scheme and really beat it up and have some fun with that free French P40 look. You know, there's like the beat the shit, hand-me-down P40s, and that was my whole goal for this thing. That's not exactly what happened. <laughs> So I started off and almost immediately got sidetracked by the Pony Bash and building a bunch of 148 scale Mustangs, which slowed down the P40. Then went on a family trip to Florida to quarantine next to a large body of water for a week. And I don't know about y'all, but when I go on vacation, it completely throws off my bench momentum. I come back and I kind of like to figure out where I was, what I was doing, and it just slows everything down. Then... I decided to take two and a half weeks off to build a U-boat earlier in the year. Work has been crazy. I've been chasing 
my 2021 goals of, you know, there's some armor stuff going on, there's some figure stuff going on, there's 3D printing and 3D design suddenly taking some center stage action. So all those things just kind of got in the way, and I feel like I had some strong progress going in pockets, and then it just kind of like fell off. And basically once I got through the main weathering, for me the interest kind of like flew away for this kit. Um, you know, knowing that it's not the most accurate, not the most detailed, it was one of those where it's like I'd had my fun, I'd learned my stuff, and I just wanted to be done. And I kind of feel like I rushed the end of it a little bit more than I should have. But at the same time, I'm ready to move on to other things. So in terms of my intentions for the painting and the weathering, what I wanted to do with this is, as I said, play with a tropical scheme, but also introduce a lot of depth and fight the tonal crush that happens when you have multiple high contrast colors kind of competing with each other. So when you've got Azure, which is this weird violet blue thing, and you've got Middlestone, which is kind of like a caramely yellow tan thing, and Dark Earth, which is Dark Earth. And you've got the French roundels, and you've got the Indian head, and you've got all these different things happening on the on the surface of this thing. You've got the big tricolor tail, or big tricolor rudder, I should say. All those different elements can pull from each other so that when the naked eye looks at it, or when a camera sensor looks at it, it goes, ooh, and doesn't know what to do, and starts crushing all those colors together. So instead of a bunch of depth in, like, the middle stone, it just all looks like middle stone. And I've been kind of playing around and working towards actively fighting that for years now. And this time I decided instead of using my usual thing like black basing to introduce tonal variation because black basing doesn't work very well over tans. That's something, I don't know, I think there's some some sort of like blue in the blacks that, that we get to use or something like that that just fucks things up. So I opted instead to do this whole sandwich shading thing and that gave me a really interesting different paint challenge from what I'm used to. And it was you know, basically putting down a layer of random modeling and contrast building stuff, layer of middle stone, contrast building stuff, layer of middle stone, etc. Basically introducing a ton of depth into the surface. And it's one of those things that it showed up as I was painting and then it preserved even through the different colors and even through the weathering. And so the final result, I think, is probably one of the more layered, depth-laden finishes I've produced to date. And from that, I'm super happy with this kit. I also wanted to play with the weathering. And with that, I think I was medium successful. I think certain parts, like I think the cowl came out fantastic. I think parts of the exhaust stains came out very well. I think some of the spattering that I was doing was super effective. On the underside, that's what I'm still struggling with. The, the azure is a very strong color and Putting anything against it looks really strange. And on top of that, I've been working through this idea of when a plane is on its wheels and you look underneath it, all that subtle weathering work that we do just vanishes. And it just looks like, oh, it's blue. And so I've been, ever since the 1D Corsair, really leaning into basically stage makeup the underside and going overboard in contrast and overboard in effect so that when it's on its wheels and you're looking at it, you know, in its natural state like that, you can still see some of that weathering. It still comes through. And I think that happened, but at the same time, it's still really hard when it's sitting there on its back and you're looking at it, and it's like, fuck, that dust looks way overboard, or fuck, that stain looks just intense and way too regimented and all that. I think it's one part I just need to work and experience and improve in that area. And it's another part, my brain just needs to get used to this idea that like, it's not supposed to be seen like this. So when you're looking at it this way, it looks all fucked up. It's like if you're looking at, you know, a painting, or not a painting, like a sculpture that is supposed to be up on a roof and it's got a forced perspective so that like the head is, you know, like Michelangelo's David is a great example of this, where the head and the upper torso and things like that are bigger because it's meant to be seen from above. And so when it's seen from above, everything evens out and looks, or it's meant to be stationed above you, like up on a rooftop and seen from below. So when you look up, the bigger head seems totally fine in proportion with everything else. Kind of like that. Like you look at it normally, it's like that dude's got a giant melon. Uh, same exact type situation with the underside here, which is like that shit looks overboard and overdone, overweathered. Uh, but when you flip it back onto its wheels, it looks fine. So I'm still sort of sorting that out in my head. 
Uh, I feel like the exhaust stains, kind of, sort of. Uh, one thing that really got rammed home for me on this build was the way that oils, yeah, I know the oils are not opaque unless you literally slather them on, but at the trace amounts we're working with for weathering, they are not opaque. But I didn't really appreciate just how stark the difference would be where one side along that exhaust stain trail, one side is dark earth, the other side is middle stone. And they look completely different. Even though they had basically the exact same stuff done to them, the exact same oils used, the same pattern of weathering for the most part, they look night and day. And that's you know something I knew, but it really helped to have that sort of like reinforced and basically have myself slapped in the face with it uh, to take forward into future builds and kind of think about ahead of time. And maybe honestly, that's something where I step away from using as many oils and building up something like an exhaust stain and actually establish some of it first with an airbrush or something like that. Yeah, so that's quite a bit of things to take away from this build. Um, you know, overall, I'm happy-ish with it. I think I got what I wanted out of it, which was, again, that practice with the tropical scheme, that practice building much more layering than I normally do, that practice of putting that weathering down to make you know even more depth and defeat tonal crush. I think all those things worked. Uh, the kit itself, I definitely cut some corners in some areas. I definitely said fuck it in some areas. And yeah, I think that kind of knocks it down a few pegs. At the same time, knowing the flaws of the kit going into it, it's one of those where I don't feel like the kit is giving me its all. And so it's very hard for me when that's happening to think I'm going to give it my all. You know, to me, it's I prefer the kits where it's like a reciprocal thing. Like to me, it's Corsairs where it's like, holy shit, this thing is amazing. I better step up my game to do it justice. As opposed to what the fuck am I working with this trumpeter kit that has all these weird random omissions and accuracy problems and whatnot. So yeah, that is the P40. Uh, I hope that you all had a good time watching this and maybe you learned something. Maybe you learned some stuff not to do. Uh, if nothing else, I hope you were at least entertained and stick around because I've got a lot more fun things coming down the pipe in 2021. Catch you later.